Uh, so thank you so much to everyone that has joined us today. Just some brief introductions to start. My name is Jenna. I've been working specifically um, at with our Ohio schools and districts at Newzella for the past year and a half. I've had the pleasure of working with David, Brooke, and Stephanie um, for almost a year now, which is great. And essentially our goals for today, we really want to help everyone on this call better understand how to use Newzella, basic functionalities, uh, I've enlisted my lovely assistant, Tyler, to help in this endeavor, so I'll let him introduce himself. Thanks, Jenna. Once again, that joke never gets old being your never. assistant. Uh, my name is Tyler Overstreet. I work with Jenna here in the Midwest. I'm an engagement manager, so really my role is like the implementation of New Zealand, like what does that look like in the classroom? So that's where I partner with Jenna as an equal and deliver things like that professional development for New Zealand. It's just way more fun to say. And now my lovely assistant, Tyler, is going to kick it off, which he's going to do right now. All right, guys, I'm gonna share my screen with everyone. And we kind of talked about like, we're gonna cover really kind of ins and outs of New Zealand today. My goal is to make sure that you guys can roster your classes. So how do we integrate? Um, show you guys then like what content we have to offer, allow you some time to actually explore and ask questions about that. And then just showing you like the basics. So like what functions come with Newzella? How do we adapt the text? How do we assign and push these articles out to our students? So it's kind of gonna be the process, but at any time you guys have questions, don't hesitate to shout them out, throw them in the chat. Chat's probably gonna be a little bit easy, probably the easiest way of doing that. Jenna's gonna be manning that chat, so she will be participating and actually doing something during this training. So we can keep her on her toes, fire away those questions. Otherwise she'll turn her camera off and disappear on us. So definitely add in those chat questions. So what I want us to do first, the very first hurdle that, you know, before we really even dive into anything with the platform, I wanna show us how do we integrate, and you guys are using Google Classroom, correct? Yes. Perfect. I'm gonna show you guys how do we roster, and what does that look like, and the process for that. So I'll show you guys first, and then I'll give us a couple minutes to like actually do that piece. So in the top right corner, you're gonna see your initials. You're going to hover over that and go to settings. So top right, your initials, go ahead and click settings. It is going to pull us into our profile page. Very, very slowly, it'll pull me into the profile page. Once we're here, I'm going to have you guys go ahead and go to classes. Like I said, you can just follow along. I'm going to give you time to do this on your own. And your guys is gonna look a little bit different than mine because you're also gonna have an option if you signed in through Google to sync with Google Classroom. So you'll be able to see Newzella classes, create a class, you'll be able to scroll down, see you know Google Classroom, sync with Google. And all you're gonna do is click that blue button that says sync with Google. It's I think we're using class link to roster. So I don't know if you need to show Google Classroom. Are we using class link or Google? Are we using both? I believe Brian set up Google uh, Class Link. I already okay. rostered mine in Class Link for this year, playing around with it. Either way works. I'm sorry, I had it in my notes as Google Classroom. I apologize for that. So if you're using Google Classroom, that's fine. If you're using Class Link, it's the same process, same steps, no matter what we're doing here. You can either create manual New Zealand classes by hitting create a class, but what you guys can do is hit that blue button that says sync with Class Link you'll be able to auto roster and import your students into the class. And what's nice about that is you're not gonna have to send your kids a class code or click add students and give them this join link. It's really just, you know, hit that sync button. Your classes will be imported. Your rosters are gonna be imported. Your kids will be ready to go. Um, once they hit the New Zella platform, they'll go through class link, they'll click the New Zella icon and they'll automatically be enrolled in your courses. So let's pause there for a second. If you have classes already created, what I want you guys to do is just spot check real quick your students tab. Make sure that your rosters are right. Um, I'm noticing a lot right now with the whole distance learning that kids are creating you know, five, six, seven different accounts every time they sign in. So this might be a good time to kind of go in and just see what your rosters are looking like at this time. So we're gonna take like two minutes if you've never created courses before, go ahead, go ahead and create them, add them in through class link. If you have courses, go ahead and check out your students tab and make sure that your rosters are looking right. And we'll pause for two minutes 
If you have questions, shout them out or add them to the chat function. I'll take about one more minute, at least get like one course set up, check your list. And when you're done with that, go ahead and on the top left, hit that new Zella icon. That's gonna take us back to our main page. No matter where you're at in the site, that always takes us back to the home screen. So about 45 seconds and we'll, we're gonna dive back in and start looking at like what content do we actually offer on our site and how it's changed over the past year. All right. Are there any questions about integration classes, anything like that before we actually dive into the content? All right. So then let's go ahead and dive into, you know, what we do at Newzella. So a lot of people like to call us news ELA and they only assume that we are a news platform and we're an ELA platform. We're actually um, cover all content areas across the board, ranging from social studies, science, health, art, career and tech ed. Uh, we have an SEL collection, so we're really about all different content areas, just not news and ELA. With that, though, we do publish news. Every single day, we add 10 articles to our platform. We're an instructional content platform, so what that means is we actually don't create the original articles. We actually go out and we curate content from partners. 100 plus partners across the world, think, um, organizations like National Geographic, Associated Press, Gilder Lehman Institute. We take their content, we bring it back to our site. And then once on our site, what we do is we put it at five different reading levels, really you know, adding in that level of differentiation. The content stays the same in all those levels, but the article adapts to meet the needs of all of our students. And that's really why you know, I believe that people use us. It's why I used it in my own classroom was really that ability to take you know, this live webcams article and be able to offer it, you know, five different levels to meet the needs of all of my kids and really engage them in content. That's really the powerful piece. Uh, what I want to show you guys though today is how we've kind of changed our approach a little bit this last school year. So if you've used Newzella before, this landing page is going to look very familiar. It's not changing. We're still going to have current event news right here at the top and all different connections. But what we've done is we've done this kind of crazy idea where we went out and we talked to teachers and said like, hey, how can we help as a platform? Like, what would you want to see on our site that would help you in your classrooms? And the biggest feedback was resource curation. Like, can you guys build out, you know, products? Can you build out collections, tech sets that match what we're doing in class? That way, we're not spending as much time searching and building our own. Because really up to the school year, going into search, and looking around for content was really the easiest way to find anything. It was a key term search. It was gonna populate all your articles and that's great. I, I'm from Illinois, by the way, in case you're wondering why the random Illinois search. But the problem with this is I can spend a lot of time going through and just trying to find those right articles that match with the content that I'm teaching. It takes a little bit of time. What we wanna do is help support you guys and actually start curating this content all in one place. So what we've done is we've created Newzella ELA, Newzella Science, and Newzella Social Studies. And they're gonna, these products are gonna look a little bit different. So I'm just gonna walk us through real quick what one of these products look like. That way you can kind of explore on your own here in just a few. I will say though, search is still gonna be the easiest and quickest way. Like if you have a very um, 
like specific topic you're looking for, search is gonna be the fastest way to find content on the site. In that search function I was showing you there, it's also where you can start filtering by like Spanish-based articles, certain grade levels you're looking for, grade bands, things like that. So it just kind of speeds that process up, but I do wanna expose us to the new products that we're you know, offering complimentary right now. And this is our new ELA page, and it's gonna look a little bit different. We're still gonna have current event connections at the very top of the page. So when you get those wonderful questions like, when am I ever gonna use this? Or how does this connect to the real world? We help build out some of those connections right at the very top of the page. And then to take it one step further, what we do is we also build out collections of just like current events, things that are going on in the world right now. So this week, Teacher Appreciation Week, celebrating teachers and actions. We have articles built around that. We have articles built around distance learning. So that's why you're gonna see things like Pear Deck and Nearpod and you know topics for debate. So if we're gonna do some kind of like Zoom debate setting up, this is gonna rotate and change throughout the year. It's gonna be the same kind of setup though for ELA, social studies and science articles and then curation of articles around current topics. The part though that's the biggest difference is this left-hand navigation. Over here, you're gonna see really four different buckets of curation. You're gonna see distance learning tools right up here at the top, and I'll show you these here in just a second. The second one's gonna be around like instructional strategies. So for social studies, like inquiry modules, science about like phenomenon-based learning. For ELAs, things like topics for debate, novel studies, pairing fiction and nonfiction. The third bucket is going to be curriculum complements. What we've done is we've actually gone out and either partnered or free use agreements with different curriculums that people are already using. So for example, Lucy Calkins units of study, we've matched the scope and sequence of that curriculum. And all we've done is added in more articles, more resources, scaffolding, differentiation, really to provide more access into curriculums that people are already using. And then the final piece is just foundational text. So at the bottom left, you're going to be able to see articles like about poetry, for ELA fiction, articles by theme, social studies and science, it's all built out around foundational texts for like chemistry, biology, US history, world history. Just really, like I said, provide that foundation piece into all these different curriculums. And that's really the navigation. It's very, very, very simple. It hasn't changed a whole lot outside, like, you know, how we lay it out. The current events are still there. It's just adding in this really, this navigation bar on the left-hand side. But what I want to show you real quick is, before I kind of turn you guys loose and let you explore a little bit, is like, what does the curation look like? What have we done that's different? So if I go into middle school here, and it's a novel study, and I click on the outsiders, I can see that I've already have, already have articles here that have been sourced um, particularly for the outsiders. Things like current event connections, historical connections, SEL based articles that tie into like the characters and the themes of the novel already built out and ready to go for me. And then to take it a step further, we added in what we call lesson sparks and resources here on the right hand side. This just gives us like ideas and activities of ways that we can incorporate these articles into our classroom. How can we use them? Here's some different activities. You know, depending on the collection, it might be like a mini workshop. It might be a summative task, a project, a debate. Uh, a lab connection, all those are going to be built out and like I said on the right hand side, really to provide that two step curation of articles and then also resources for all of our teachers. So that's really the biggest difference. Each product is going to have that same layout where you're going to be able to click into collections, look at the articles, look at the activities and resources. That's what like I said, it's really the big difference from old Newzella to new Newzella. And then also while we're exploring here, because I said I'm going to turn you guys loose here in just a minute. Every product is also going to have a distance learning toolkit. A lot of like great activities built around how do we engage students right now in the climate and culture that we're living in? How do we help support caregivers? How do we support teachers by giving them low left activities to really help support, you know, working from home now. These distance learning toolkits have lots and lots of activities that can be assigned digitally and through PDF too. So definitely check out those kits. And then we also have daily lessons that are built out on each page. And these are gonna have day-to-day -day lesson plans that are gonna have ELA, social studies, science, and like an SEL active engagement piece. Every week we roll out five lessons. You can go in day one, here are the four activities. They have articles, 
they have you know connections they have all sorts of like elements built into them and like i said they're short they're quick really designed to be high engagement and kind of you know low lift for teachers caregivers and really just to kind of get the brains going for our students so those are daily lessons each product has those top left tabs those distance learning pieces if you're looking for these products, they're probably going to be underneath your subjects. We're playing around a couple different formats. So if you don't see them right here at the top, they'll be underneath your subjects. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause. I'm going to stop talking for a little bit and I'm going to give us five, six minutes. I really just want people to kind of go through, click, see what we have to offer. And we'll come back um, after those five, six minutes and we'll answer questions. You can also shout those out in the chat function and I will pause here and we'll come back at 25 after. As you guys are going through this, if you're a social studies person, I encourage you to check out, we just added in, well, social studies and science, we just added in virtual museum tours onto the platform. Um, we also added in um, to the social studies product, we have some really cool inquiry modules built into it. We added in DBQs this week and also exploring data. So if you're looking for some really high level really engaging like database activities, um, really diving into like statistics or things like that for science or social studies. We've built out these um, exploring data with Tuva uh, labs and we have some really cool um, data piece activities. So definitely some things to check out as you're exploring.
All right, about one more minute and we'll come back together. So we've had about five minutes to explore. What I'm gonna have you do is in one minute, choose one article that you're interested in. So maybe it's something that you wanna roll up to your students, maybe something for next school year. Choose one article, click into it, and then we're gonna dive into like, what are the features of Nuzel and how does it work? All right, before we dive into an article, are there any questions from the group about content they're seeing, they're not seeing, any questions about finding content, anything like that? All right, then let's go ahead and dive into the features of Newzell, so like what comes with every article on the platform. So I'm gonna start us off with really the biggest piece of Newzell. It's gonna be this top right corner. It's gonna have a number, an L next to it. It might say max up there. This is our text level button. If you have an article that also has Spanish, you're gonna see Spanish right next to it. You can switch back and forth between English and Spanish. I'm gonna go back to the English one. It just show us the max level. If you're ever curious about like, what's the original article from our partners, it's always gonna be the max level. It's the same with primary sources. So this came from the Smithsonian. If you went to their website, you'd be able to find this article word for word on the site. Currently, this article is written at the 12th grade level. You can see kind of the complexity and the structure of the article as we move through it. What we can then do though, is to go up here to this level button. We can click the 610 level and adapt this text all the way down to the third grade reading level. You can see that the complexity and the structure of the article has changed. What hasn't changed though, is the content within it. So yes, they might've pulled out some of the complexity, it's more simple sentences, things like that. But the main idea, the concepts and ideas that you want kids pulling out of that, they're still in there. And this is really that powerful piece as we're assigning articles, you know, especially digitally right now, meeting the needs of kids that aren't sitting right in front of us. This allows us to automatically differentiate for these kids and identify their reading levels to get them to the con get them the content that they need at the level that they need it. So that's really the powerful piece and why people use Newzella. It's why I use it in my classroom. I had 55 kids in a co-taught history and ELA class ranging from, you know, elementary readers to college readers. This really helped kind of bridge that gap, you know, in providing content at the high school level to kids that are reading at all different levels. And what, what we do is we actually take it one step further though. If you click on the activities on the right hand side, you're going to see a writing prompt and a quiz. Every article comes with a writing prompt and quiz. The quiz is really the important piece though, because it's a quick little four question quiz, ties into the article, kind of those comprehension elements. It also adapts to different reading levels. But what's so important about the quiz is after your students take roughly five quizzes on the platform, we'll identify their reading level. And when you as a teacher go and you hit assign, we will differentiate for you. So you don't have to go in and say, you know, David gets this level, Jenna gets this level we'll automatically take care of that with one click of a button. You don't have to go in and do that at all. We take care of it. So that's really kind of the big element is that auto differentiation piece. Are there any questions about, you know, how that process works or any, any kind of clarifying pieces with that that I can answer? It's usually where we get the most questions around. Um, anything with that. Can the students go back and forth between the article and the test? Yep, they can open it up and have it open the entire time if they want. Thank you. Yep. And then Tracy also had a question about a read aloud version. It, we don't currently have that built in, but as you can see up here in the top right corner, I have Google Read and Write installed on my computer. It, it works really, really well with it. It's a great accessibility tool for reading aloud. It works very easy, point, click, hit play. Also, Tracy, if you're looking for another really good accessibility tool, one of my new favorite ones that just came out like this past year, it's called Helper Bird, H-E-L-P-E-R Bird. And it has things like dyslexia font, it has translate, color blindness, it has Microsoft Immersive Reader because they partnered with Microsoft. All 
part of the free product too, just really providing more access into the articles for students. So Google Read and Write, Helper Bird are probably my two favorite ones that I recommend for accessibility. All right, writing prompt, really straightforward feature. You can edit and adapt it right here on the site. It's been used a lot of different ways. Students can open this up at any point while they're reading. I use it a lot as a bell ringer in my class. My ELA counterpart, she used it a lot for like modeling writing. So you know, here's a textual evidence statement. Here's how you properly cite it. Here's all those elements to it. Make sure when you're writing out your writing prompt, here's how you can go about doing it. The quiz and the writing prompt are automatically attached to every article. It doesn't mean that your kids have to do it. I'm just kind of giving you a heads up though, you know, hey, if I only want them to do the quiz, you can add that into your instruction. Um, but these will appear every single time. Last feature that I want to show you guys is the ability for teachers and students to go in, take their mouse, scroll over any piece of text, and highlight it. You'll see an annotation box pop up on the right hand side. You'll be able to choose a color and add in any questions that you want into the document. Teachers can add in their own questions. Students can add in their own annotations. Students will be able to respond to teacher annotations. You'll also be able to respond to student annotations too. And it can be used in a lot of different ways. So it doesn't just have to be like right there within the text type of questions. It could also be used for identifying grammar or writing elements. So go through the article and identify evidence statements and the reasoning or the sequence of um, writing the author goes through. Go through and identify, you know, words that you don't understand. Or maybe use a teacher want to, you know, build on vocab. So we're really looking on the word of, let's say, intangible was one of our key terms. You can actually highlight the word and then go through and, you know, teach like how we identify context clues and highlight different um, elements to really provide context to that. So a lot of different ways. I see people use it for grammar too. It's like go through and identify proper nouns, indirect object, direct object, however you want to use it. Just doesn't just have to be like co reading comprehension based questions. So just want to point that out. I will also point out too that annotations I create at one level don't automatically go to another level. And the reason behind that is we want to really one, think about the types of questions that we're asking, questions we're asking at the 12th grade level. Prior can be the same questions we ask at the third grade level. It allows us to really personalize pathways for our students. So that's why I encourage people, like, don't go too annotation crazy. These articles are pretty short. Three to five is usually the magic number. I won't tell you how to teach, though. If you want to add in, you know, 17 annotations for each one, probably not going to be real fun grading those on five different levels, but that is completely up to you. And then once you set that all up, you're ready to go, you're ready to assign. So top right corner, you'd come up here, you'd hit assign. It'd bring you into this page and your assignment's already set up. You've added any annotations, you've changed the writing prompt. Title at the top, pretty straightforward. You choose which classes you wanna send this out to. And then I really wanna highlight this button because this is kind of the tricky piece on this page. It's what kind of gets people, um, messed up a little bit sometimes when they assign it. If you don't click this button, we'll automatically differentiate for you. If you do click this button, it will allow you to lock the level of the article into one level. So, hey, I want my kids to only see this article at the 12th grade level, I can lock that in. The, kind of the idea behind this and how I see people using it is, you know, I used it for like primary sources. I wanted my kids to see the original text and the original language. I locked it in, we'd go over it as a class, we'd talk about it, and I'd actually go back in and reassign it and allow it to differentiate so they could really start diving into the content of it. I see that at the lower levels, you know, elementary levels where people are using it as, you know, a way to like foster read aloud. So I want every kid to see the article at the same level, the same words, we're doing a read aloud. Um, this allows us to kind of lock it in so it doesn't differentiate. Like I said though, if you don't click it or you hit reset, will differentiate, send the articles out at all the levels for your students. Last piece is instructions. Pretty straightforward, you know, highlight after you're done, go to Flipgrid, create this, whatever you wanna add in. We put it at the top of the page and when they click the assignment, we put it at the top of the page. When they click into the article, it's big, it's bold, zero guarantees that they'll actually read it, but we try to help you guys out as much as we possibly can by having them see it at least twice. And then finally, you're ready to go. You hit assign. 
that article is now pushed out to all your students. It's been differentiated. It's a click of a button. You didn't have to go through and set any of those levels for your kids. It's ready to go. As this page is loading, this is where I'm going to pause for a second because this is where we're going to start looking at a little bit of the binder and look at the data piece and where to grade, how do we collect data. So it looks like there is a question in the chat from teacher. Can a student change the reading level on their own? Great question. The Nuzella answer that I'm supposed to tell you is that at Nuzella, we believe students should be independent readers and allow them to self-differentiate when they, you know, they're struggling or when they want to push themselves. And really, that's how we want to foster those lifelong readers and learners and blah, 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 blah. Really nice answer. What's going to happen, though, is kids are going to realize that and they're going to probably try to hustle the system a little bit. So, for example, my juniors in high school find that button. They're like, oh, Mr. Arbitrary, I just crushed that quiz, four out of four. In our binder, I can see if they adapted that text. So if they dropped it down to the second grade level, I'll see that on my end. I can have that conversation. So, you know, we want kids to be cognizant of where they're at and they're struggling and they can change the level. That's great. Will they sometimes abuse it? Very, very possible. That was my kids. It's why I'm on this side of the screen now, not on your guys' side of the screen, because, you know, obviously I wasn't doing something right. Hypothetical, though, if it does happen to you, all you'd have to do is come into this assignment page, which is, which is underneath Binder. And you could scroll through and let me find an article to show you guys. Let's go with this U46 one. So when I click into an assignment, this page is gonna open up. It's gonna show me all the data from that assignment. If a student appears multiple times on this page, as my data loads. So for example, Anna here, appears three times that means that she changed the level three times so she looked at it the third grade the second grade and the sixth grade level we show that data it's instant as soon as they they flip it over we pop that into your binder so you can see it this is also a page like i said where you can go in you can see the quiz score if they had a writing prompt score it would appear right here you can see when they access the article it's also where you can click into individual students and start creating so that's assignment binder underneath the binder I'll be able to click in see the quiz see which questions they got right which ones they got wrong if this student created annotations I would be able to also see that here on this page too and then I'd be able to go through on the left hand side and choose which students I want to look at next so that, that's gonna be the easiest way for you to grade so we're gonna probably spend most of your time how did and, you get to that page yeah what's that could you go back just a little bit and show me how you got on to the page where the kids worked. Yep. Where they, so where they highlighted, etc. Yep. Yep. So once you assign an article, it automatically pulls you into this page. But okay. if you ever want to get back to this assignment page, you're gonna go up here to the top right where it says binder, okay. and you'll click assignments, and it's gonna pull you into this page. It's slowly loading for me here. This page is gonna keep track of every single assignment that you pushed out over the last school year. You'll be able to see every single one. You'll just choose which one you want to go in and grade. So I'm going to go ahead and grade. Let's go with one that actually has students that have completed it. Ranking Girl Scout cookies right here. So I'm going to click into it. That's what I want to grade. Obviously, Ranking Girl Scout cookies, the answer is Thin Mints, in case you were wondering. It's number one rank, ranking in this article as well as it should be. It pulls you into this landing page and it'll show you what students have completed this article assignment. So this is where you'll go, and this is where you'll be able to click into each student to actually grade it. So binder, assignments, choose your assignment, and it'll show you all your students. Only other data piece that I'm gonna show you guys today, because I don't wanna overwhelm us, we've covered a lot of information, is the reading summary page. This reading summary page is where we take all your assignments, and all the data that we have on your students and just compile it into one binder page. So you'll be able to see their reading levels, average quiz scores, average writing prompt scores, number of annotations that they've created, breakdown by certain standards. It's just really all of that summative data that we've collected on your students lives in this reading summary page. You'll be able to see it you know, student by student, and you can also click into individual students and kind of drill down into their binder and see all their data in one place for all their classes. So this is slowly loading this wonderful spinning wheel of color, which is the 
possibly the worst thing on Newzilla. You'll be able to, like I said, come here and you'll be able to see all your students, quiz scores, all their information. You'll be able to see their reading levels. You'll be able to click in to each student and just see like a, a further breakdown of that student. So you can see like what class they're in. Are they doing independent reading? All that data exists in the reading binder, um, reading summary binder. All right, that was like another 10, 15 minutes of me talking straight there. Um, I'm gonna pause here and really just kind of stop because you know we've covered classes, exploring content, the features and assign. That was kind of the goal of today. We have 20 minutes now. I wanna just kind of open it up for Q&A a little bit, and just see, do I need to go back and show you something? Do you have a, you know, random off the wall questions? Anything that you guys need answered, uh, we can definitely use this time. Or if you're sitting there like, hey, I just need to explore and I'm good and you wanna take 20 minutes back in your life, former teacher here, I'm never opposed to getting out of professional development early. So what do we have from the group? All right, I feel like I'm back in the classroom, guys. Appreciate it, like, getting a little deja vu, like, hey, Mr. Overstreet asked the questions. Let's pretend like he's not here. Hey, Tyler. But, yeah. Um, so I was talking to a colleague of mine in the science department. He was saying something about if you request like a, a book, like I'm an English teacher, uh, request a book to be added to this with a text set. Would you guys do that? Uh, we, we, we do love getting suggestions. Is there a certain one that you're looking for? Well, we might be interested in House of the Scorpion for the fall. Okay. Um, I'll have my assistant Jenna write that down. So she can, we can follow up with our product team just to see if that is um, on our pathways or if that's something that we can get added. Thank you. That's You're great welcome. news. And it was House of the Scorpion? House of the Scorpion we were thinking about using. Okay. Just came full circle, Jenna. Full circle. <laughs> I know. That was pretty nice. Okay. I'm going to check on that for you, though. Hey, I also want to remind everyone that if you take the next day and a half or so and you have a question or something comes up that you want to know more about, remember that we have open office hours on Thursday. So you could come back on Thursday and ask that question or ask Tyler for more information about something that you've seen um, or that's something that you explored. So I just want to make sure before um, we checked out that we mentioned Thursday's open office hours and, and you have that, uh, that time to uh, explore further with Tyler. And one other thing, so during those office hours, in the interim, while we wait for House of the Scorpion to be on the site, what we can do is we can actually show you how to build a text set um, around the themes or uh, really anything that aligns with that novel. Um, so that's a great way to utilize those office hours too. Isn't that also one of the later sessions, like uh, how to build text sets? Yeah. It is, it is. So what we're thinking for office hours is just more like one-on-one -on -one time where you guys can ask direct questions and we can partner with you to actually like build those types of resources. Um, so yeah, if you wanna stand by and wait for the tech set session, then we will definitely walk you through all the steps to do that during that session. Or office hours, either one. Thank or you, that's great. <laughs> All right, guys, seems like uh, we can let you go now. So if everyone just wants to give a brief round of applause for my lovely assistant, I know you're all muted. Thank you, Rachel. He did so great. Hope he gets promoted soon so we can be equals. <laughs> all right, guys, enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy Cinco de Mayo. Um, hopefully some good things to do during quarantine. And everybody stay healthy and safe. Thanks, you guys.